Hi there. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new. Today I'm excited to do the second part of what I'm calling the Google Picks My Color Palette Challenge. I'm unsure if there's anything exactly like this on YouTube right now. I am familiar with the three marker challenge or color challenge, but in that challenge the colors are picked at random separate from each other and obviously the challenge is to get them to work into a piece comprehensively and make them look nice together. Whereas this challenge, I'm going to have a pre-thought out, pre-sketched out idea that is not influenced by any colors, and then picking a color palette and trying to get that color palette to work with this particular idea. Now that might not seem like a challenge for some artists, but for me it definitely is. The paintings I do usually rely very heavily on what colors I'm going to use beforehand. So for me, this is going to be a fun and good way to hopefully increase my skill. If you haven't seen my first video of this series, I'll go ahead and link it in the card and the description and in the comments. I went to Google Image Search and just typed in color palette or some variation of that and I allowed myself the choice of the first three options because I was afraid I would get the same option over and over and this is the color palette that was chosen. Now before we look at the sketch I'm going to be incorporating this into, I will show you the colors that I believe these were looking at my handy dandy color mixing chart. I have a video where I made this and it is amazing and I will also link it everywhere if you're interested in checking that out. So starting from left to right because I'm a lefty and not a monster we have white as our first color. Our second color is turquoise. Our third color is white and turquoise. Our fourth color is violet and sienna. And our final color is alizarin crimson and viridian hue. Feel free in the comments to let me know how close you think I got to these colors or which color you would have chosen instead to replace one that I chose. I'd be really interested to hear your opinions. I'll try and match up these images side by side so you have a better comparison and feel free to let me know in the comments how close you think I got to these colors or which color you would have chosen to replace the ones that I chose. So what I didn't do on my first part of this series, links everywhere, was actually show you my sketch before I started painting it because I had already transferred it to my watercolor paper and the lines are quite light when I do that. So you probably weren't able to see what it was until I was pretty far into painting it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this now before I transfer it. Like I said before, I had this idea fleshed out before I knew the color palette I was going to be using. And what I like to do is to go onto Pinterest and find a pose that I'm interested in drawing and kind of try to build an idea off of that pose. So obviously here we have a person lying down and I went ahead and made the eyes looking down because in my previous video the person's eyes were looking up at something. And since this person is looking down, I wanted her to be looking at something obviously. I really enjoyed drawing characters but I like them to have something to interact with them in the scene because without that it just feels a little boring to me so I once again commissioned my husband for his brilliant ideas and he donated the idea of this adorable little chipmunk ground squirrel chipmunk whatever you want to call it all the chipmunk references I found online, most of them had pretty flat and thin tails, but I really like this fluffy tail, kind of like a tree squirrel has, so I'm incorporating that. Think of this as a chipmunk squirrel hybrid. Okay, now that you've seen the sketch, I'm going to go ahead and get it transferred to my watercolor paper.
Here I'm using my masking fluid pen to keep certain areas of her clothing white. And it's really neat because once it's dry I can paint right over it without worrying about it changing color. And once I'm completely finished painting and it's all dry, I can just rub the masking fluid away and the white of the paper shines through. After I started putting the colors down, I realized maybe I should have done the hair blue or purple since my last character painting also had red hair. Next time I'll make sure I don't seem partial, I promise I'm not. Here I'm just diluting my pinkish paint and putting down blush areas and later I'll go over that to get a skin tone that will be noticeably different from the white background. I was getting a little frustrated painting the skirt. It's like I forget that watercolors are not meant to be opaque and they're supposed to be layered. So when this blue wasn't showing up as dark as I wanted, I kept trying to make it darker while it was still wet instead of letting it dry and build up layers. Lesson learned. My original idea was to have the squirrel eating some type of nuts that the girl had collected in her basket, but they kind of ended up looking like blueberries to me, so that's what I'm going with. I have no idea if chipmunks actually eat blueberries, but this one does. The hair dryer is such a great tool to speed up the drying process. Wish I would have thought to use it on the skirt for quick layers.
I tried adding shading using graphite to the shirt for some depth. I didn't like it, so don't get attached because it doesn't stay. If it seems like I'm jumping back and forth between areas that I should have already been finished with, it's because I really don't have a strategic process when it comes to art. Maybe it's something I'll develop as I gain experience, but I don't know. I mean, I see these other art videos where they'll say, how I or my way of, and I guess I may have a certain way that I automatically do some things, but there's no real strict system. Like I said, maybe one day I will, but until then, I'm happy just to keep working with it until I like it, or until I'm tired of messing with it. I decided to add a background just to help them pop a bit, but I can't tell if it helped or not. Okay, well here is my finished piece. I'm not quite as happy with it as I was hoping to be, but it's not bad. This is the first piece that I think I've actually aligned, and it was just because I felt that it just didn't really pop off the page enough, and I do think it looks better with the liner. I had a really hard time with just leaving this shirt white. I tried to shade it in, but then I didn't really like the way it looked, so I erased the shading, and I really just tried to make her skin look a different color from the shirt. I'm really happy with how Mr. Cute Chipmunk came out. The hair was a bit of a struggle, but I'm okay with it. And ultimately, I think it looks pretty nice. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And also comment below and tell me what you thought. And consider subscribing to my channel because I do plan on coming out with more videos. And maybe leave a suggestion of what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. Alright, thanks guys. Bye.